this week on One Devotion. Meet a budding big man following fast in his father's footsteps. Hear from a Euroleague star who gets strong competition from his sisters. Remember with two legends how they won their last continental trophy. And find out which teams opened a new phase on the right foot. Former Euroleague centre Franjo Arapovic was a memorable big man in the proud basketball nation of Croatia. Legendary for his charisma, emotion and connection with the fans, Franjo was a two-time Euroleague champion and a two-time Olympic silver medalist during the mid-1980s and early 90s. Franjo's teenage son Marco might never reach his father's 2 meters 15 height, but he is well on his way to a big career of his own, as he currently has helped Sedevita Zagreb to reach the top 16 for the first time ever. Given his physical tools, it's no surprise that Marco made a decision to follow in his father's footsteps. We had a basket in our yard, so I was always playing it. Calling my friends over, you know, playing free on free, two on two, and it was a lot of fun, and it was something that's a part of my life since I was a kid, so it, it was eventually going to happen. During a successful 20 year professional career, Father Franjo Arapovic won Euroleague titles with Sibona Zagreb in 1985 and 1986, and Olympic silver with Yugoslavia in 1988 and Croatia in 1992, not to mention a Supporter Cup crown with Shalgiris Kaunas in 1998. Now, every day that Marco steps on the court, it's his father's career that inspires him to become better. He went through a lot. He, he was practicing on the ways that we can't even imagine right now because we have all the conditions and they had none. So basically what inspires me the most is that they use the conditions I have. But now we have like greater conditions and I just want to make the most of it because we, you know we have like everything we need to become successful and it's only on us to keep working hard, keep grinding. So one day I hope I will maybe even get more medals than he did. Marco's career is already shaping up to be a solid one too. He only turned 19 in July and is quickly becoming one of the Euroleague's youngest regular contributors. He has not missed a game since making his debut in the competition last season and to hear him talk, he might never miss one. I felt so motivated last year when I played my first game. I was burning inside, I couldn't sleep the night before, you know, it was something, wow, I'm playing Euroleague, you know. And this year I feel like I'm going to prove myself to be a better player than I was last year. And I feel like our team could make a bigger impact this year. This season, Marco's minutes have almost doubled, as have his scoring, rebounding and assists. Most importantly, he is playing a key role in helping Cervita mount its most successful Euroleague campaign so far. And while he does, his father is watching and ready to give Arapovic timely advice. Well, the best advice is the, the one that he always gives me, and that's to stay calm. He never pushes his like opinions on me, you know. He, I'm my own man, and he knows that. And but in the fact. When I do something really wrong and he sees it, he's just trying to correct me. But he's never going to come first and say, yeah, do this, do that, do that, because that's not him, you know. He's trying to make me my own person. With a promising start to his pro career and a fantastic career in juniors, one can't help but wonder if the younger Arapovic can win even more than his father did. I feel like one day I'm going to win Euroleague for sure, because that's that's something I made, made with, like, as a goal, you know, that's something I'm aiming for right now. He's always saying that maybe I'm going to be a better player for him than he was. I mean, that's for sure, that's his says. But I'm not going to win so many medals as he did, you know. But that's something I, I actually find myself challenging about it, you know. 
it's something I want to do, it's something I want to prove him wrong. <laughs> Despite having won two of the previous four EuroLeague titles, Panathinaikos Athens was coming off its second worst record this century and was far from a favourite as the 2010-2011 season started. 2011 year was a very good year for us. Because we didn't start, you know, as uh, the team that he will be on the final four. Even after dominating its regular season and top 16 groups, there was still no guarantee come playoffs time that the Greens could rise again, because standing in their way was FC Barcelona, the defending champion and host of the upcoming 2011 Final Four. Barcelona won a Game 1 thriller at home, but after that it was all Panathinaikos, with three consecutive victories to survive one of the greatest playoff series ever. The games are very good, very interesting, uh, with a lot of passion, intensity. Upon returning to Barcelona a few weeks later, Panathinaikos still had an afterglow from that impressive playoffs win and was now considered the favourite at the Final Four in Palau San Jordi. People thinking in this way because we beat in uh, playoff games Barcelona, defending champion the previous year. So everybody, after that result, they start to talk that it's impossible for Panathinaikos to lose this Final Four. And it was like this. The Greens themselves were not immune to the feeling that the 2011 Final Four had become theirs to control, thanks in large part to their previous success at lifting the trophy. We was in the Final Four uh, years before and we knew how will be the, the Final Four. We were ready also as a team uh, mentally and uh, also to, to play the games. Indeed, the Greens were ahead on the scoreboard after every quarter, except the first that weekend, and cruised to a pair of eight-point victories, first in the semi-final against Montebasqui Siena, and then in the championship game against Maccabi Tel Aviv. We play really with big confidence. We go over there to play against Siena semi-final, and we know that if you play our game, they don't have possibility. With big respect to Siena, of course. Same it was against Maccabi, absolutely same. Leading the way was an unstoppable veteran duo. Diamantidis had nine assists in each of the final four games and netted 16 points in the title game. While big man Mike Batiste scored 34 points during the weekend, including 18 points with the trophy on the line against Maccabi. In history of basketball, if somebody want to to teach the players, they will take a lot of videos of Diamantidis and Batiste playing pick and roll. You know, if you play with someone a lot of years and you understand him just watching with one look, everything everything is easy. Diamantidis became the third player ever to become Final Four MVP twice, and his 18 assists remain a record for the event. But the Panathinaikos legend puts team success ahead of his personal accolades. That's why you are trying all the year. That's why you practice all those hours in the gym. The goal is to go in the Final Four, and if you are good, you can you take the trophy, and you are very happy. You trying all those things, preparation, practices, to take something, and we took the Euroleague title. Of course, if you take also some individual titles that uh, are very important uh, for me as a player, it was a good year. With its three titles between 2007 to 2011, Panathinaikos became the most successful team ever in Final Fours, and of its six continental titles, five were won with Abradovic on the bench. Five Euroleagues, it's something special and 
I always thinking in this way that Panathinaikos having fans how they have and everything what means Panathinaikos that it was in this period the best team in, in Europe without any question. The opening week of the top 16 delivered some thrilling finishes. Here's how it all happened. Malaga overcame Darush Shafaka, Lokomotiv won in Zagreb, FS edged out Servena Zvezda and Fenerbahce defeated Panathinaikos. Darush Shafaka battled hard in the first half in Malaga, but Unicaja pulled away in the final straight as Edwin Jackson scored 13 points in the fourth quarter to secure a home victory for the Spanish team. Lokomotiv exploded into life in the second quarter behind weekly MVP Malcolm Delaney, who scored 24 points by half-time to set up an ultimately comfortable road win. FS and Cervena Zvezda shared a thriller in Istanbul, with the visitors establishing a strong lead behind the outstanding Mike Zirbes. But Brian Dunstan led FS back and Dario Saric hit a nerveless game winner to give the hosts victory. And Fenerbahce roared into a big early lead over Panathinaikos before Miroslav Radulica helped the Greens fight back and take the lead. But Piero Antic produced big late plays and Fenerbahce retained its unbeaten home record. Road Warriors Lokomotiv scored the most points and had the biggest winning margin in the top 16 Group E. Himki, Moscow, Olympiakos and Real Madrid won at home and Laboral triumphed on the road. A local derby kick-started the top 16 as Seska Moscow moved into an early lead, but crosstown rivals Himki fought back behind backcourt duo Tyrese Rice and Alexei Shved. It all came down to the final two shots of the game. Shved scored. Milos Teodosic missed, and Himki celebrated a famous win. In the game of the week, Olympiakos took control against Barcelona in the second quarter and didn't let up, using fine team defence to record a comfortable home win. Rosa Baskets led most of the way against Real Madrid, but Sergio Rodriguez masterminded a spirited comeback and then scored the winning basket inside the final minute. Laboral Kucha very quickly established a double-digit lead in Kaunas, and although Shalgiris fought back, the visitors finished strong to ensure they were never in trouble, as five players reached double figures in a big away victory. Olympiakos and Laboral won in double figures in a group which promises to be very closely fought. Not many players have more basketball blood running through their veins than Laboral Kucha's Fabian Couser, who comes from a family where practically everyone has played the sport at a high level. In my hometown in Brest, yeah, my, my grandfather was the coach of my uncle and my father. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's like all my family uh, played basketball. Yeah, I have two sisters. Uh, they're playing together actually now. One of them is 18 years old and the other one is 30. And they are playing together. So, like, uh, it's natural in our family. Like, we are born and raised to play basketball. Well, uh, this picture is one of the first uh, year I play basketball. Uh, I think this was my second or third season when my father started to, to be my head coach. And, uh, yeah, I was maybe, like, Six, six, seven years old. Um, yeah, that's how I, I really start to, to get addicted to the game because my first years, like, I was just like running up and down, and I didn't understand very much about basketball. But I really get addicted when I was seven. I'm at the at the table to put the score during the game of maybe uh, my sisters. I don't know. This is my mother here, and 
yeah, like as you can see, uh, I always got the basketball in, in my hands. Uh, this, is, this was me like uh, for 10 years, like this, always uh, uh, in a gym with the basketball and, uh, and shooting. This one, I'm, I'm older already. Uh, I guess I'm like uh, 13, 13 years old, maybe 14. Uh, with the number five, I always had this, this number during my whole career. Just here, one year at the 55. But, um, I was with uh, my team in uh, in Brest. Uh, I think this was for, for a tournament, and uh, if I remember well, we won this tournament. And the last one is a special one because this is like uh, maybe you know him. This is Jim Bilba, uh, ex-player of. Uh, uh, the French national team, he played in, uh, in Lyon, in all the big teams in, in France. And uh, I was at one tournament uh, with a selection of, uh, of my state, of Britain, and uh, he was like uh, coming to, to see the, the tournament. And yeah, I, I take this picture because he was one of my idols. And the funny thing is like, um, he was my uh, assistant coach for three years when I was playing in Cholet. He may be a well-travelled veteran of seven EuroLeague seasons with four different clubs in three countries, but in his own family, power forward Milko Bielica of Darusha Faka Dos Istanbul is just one out of several elite athletes. My sisters, one of them, older sister Milka, she is a basketball player, and a younger sister Anna, she is a professional volleyball player. About parents, uh, my father used to play professional, but in, in his time, it's a long, long time ago. And uh, mother not that professional at that level, but uh, you know, like there was some uh, interest in basketball as well. Milko and Milka, three years apart in age, would always be found on the basketball court together while growing up. Milka was the first to make her name among the Bielitsa children, turning pro at age 16 with Servena Zvedsta. But it wasn't long before her little brother was also showing his stuff too. We play against each other, you know, until that moment when I uh, start winning, you know, and then she didn't want to play anymore. <laughs> After 14, 15, I start to grow, so I, I become taller than her. It's pretty difficult for her. One thing Milka and Milko had in common was injuries. So when their little sister Anna came along eight years after her brother, their mother decided her youngest would try some different sports. We start with uh, tennis, then with, uh, with athletic, and, uh, and then volleyball. But because my sister and me, we, sh we had uh, some uh, injuries, you know, what was very stressful for my mother. And uh, because basketball is a contact game and it's a big, bigger risk to get injuries. So my mom uh, decided to let Anna play volleyball because this is a sport with, with not so many injuries and, uh, and it's easier to watch for her. Like her older siblings, Anna excelled too. As a teenager, she was already a runner-up for the European club volleyball title with Servena Zvedsta, where all three siblings started their careers. She has since won six medals with the Serbian national team, including a World Cup silver last year. Her success as a striker makes her brother think that Anna could have starred at basketball too. We have the, the basket court in our uh, house, you know, and, uh, and she, I saw her that she, she... I think she had talent for basketball too, but uh, now it's too late. Although Milko has solidified his place in the Euroleague, he still has a way to go to catch up with his big sister, who has starred in nine different countries over 17 pro seasons. For one season, brother and sister coincided far from home, Milko playing in the Euroleague for Lietuva Saritas, while Milka doing the same for the top women's club in the Lithuanian capital. Although their teams were often travelling at different times, when possible, the siblings were in the stands as each other's biggest fan. 
Of course, not only me, you know, because in, in that time in, in my team there uh, there was some other Serbian players too, so we, we support each other. It's good to have company, even if it's your family, even better. Today, after playing in more than 120 EuroLeague games and eclipsing 1,000 points and 400 rebounds, Milko still gladly takes advice from his older sister Milka. All the time, yeah, all the time. I accept advice from her because I think she understands basketball and she is uh, experienced and doesn't matter if it's woman basketball, she still know. And she, she knew me, you know, how, how I can play, what is my uh, maximum, uh, how much I can uh, give on the court and, and like that. This is only positive critics and uh, nothing bad. Milko's high regard for his sister is such that even though he can beat her one-on-one, -on -one, if there's a star in the family, in his eyes, it's Milka. It's hard to say uh, because, you know, our older sister, she, she, she always expected that she will be that person and I, I would say her. One of the EuroLeague's top performers so far this season had plenty more to show at the start of the top 16 this week as Malcolm Delaney of Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar walked away with the MVP honour for the first round of the new phase. Delaney blew away his career highs in scoring and performance index rating to lead Lokomotiv to a sizzling 75-89 away win over Sedevita Zagreb in top 16 Group E. The 26-year-old guard blasted off with 14 of his team's 16 first-quarter points and climbed to 24 at half-time, before finishing with 31 total as Lokomotiv pulled steadily ahead to victory. Delaney made six of six two-point shots, five of nine threes and four of five free throws, while also dishing eight assists and drawing seven fouls for a 41 index rating matching the second best of all Euroleague players this season. The award was the second weekly one in his two-season Euroleague career for Delaney, who was also named MVP of the month in October this season. Number five, Istanbul, Turkey. FS trailing by one point, time running out. John Diebler to Thomas Ertel to Dario Saric to win the game for Anadolu FS Istanbul. Nerves of steel from the young man, Dario Saric. FS winning it at the death. Number four, Moscow, Russia. Here is another late game winner, Alexei Shved for Kimki. The game was tied, but Shved showing great skill to put on the brakes. Pull back, send up the shot, and win it for Himki Moscow. Local bragging rights for the home team against Ceska Moscow. Number three, Istanbul, Turkey. Bobby Dixon with the ball for Fenerbahce. Bace. Great pass to Jan Vesely. And he leaps for a hang time slam. Jan Vesely back in the top ten. Number two, Moscow, Russia. Just before the halftime buzzer, Corey Higgins steadies himself and hits a strike. From half court, it sails straight in for Ceska Moscow. Corey Higgins takes aim, fires, and he hits the target. Number one, Madrid, Spain. Daniel Tice receives the ball, and what a slam over two defenders. Daniel Tice. Round two of the top 16 will feature a thrilling game of the week between two of last season's final four teams, while some of the league's loudest and proudest fans will try to help their team overcome another leading title contender. In Group E, a fabulous atmosphere is guaranteed as Cervenas Vedsta and the dynamic Quincy Miller go in search of a fourth straight home win against former local player Nikola Kalinic and the last visiting team to defeat the hosts, Fenerbahce Istanbul. 
In Russia, regular season group winners Lokomotiv Kuban Krasnodar and powerful Anthony Randolph will look to maintain that winning feeling as they welcome ambitious Anadolu FS Istanbul and rising star Jedi Osman. Also in Group E, Panathinaikos hosts Unikaha Malaga and Sedevita Zagreb travels to take on Darushafaka. In Group F, a high-powered Game of the Week will see Seska Moscow and the versatile Corey Higgins try to get into the top 16 victory column as reigning champions Real Madrid and determined EuroLeague rookie Jeffrey Taylor pay a visit to the Russian capital. Another home team determined to record its first top 16 victory is FC Barcelona, which will lean upon the ever-reliable Ante Tomic to take on highly talented Alexei Shved and Hinky Moscow after their great start to the new phase. And Group F also contains a rematch from the regular season as Laboral Kucha welcomes Olympiakos to Vitoria, while Jalgiris Kaunas go on the road to face Brosa Baskets Bamberg.